In this video, I'll be teaching you one of the most important power moves, the windmill. The windmill is an impressive skill on its own and very useful to link other power moves. It is also a great stepping stone to more advanced moves like air flares and halos. If you compare air flares and windmills, they are essentially the same body motion, however air flares are elevated on the hands. Consequently, having this skill as a prerequisite can speed your progress toward air flares significantly. The windmill, like the swipe and air flare, rotates around two axes simultaneously. You can roughly picture this as a combination of a backspin and a log roll. I encourage you to learn swipes and the backspin first, as they will teach you skills you can apply to the windmill, speeding your progress. Tutorials for each of these moves are on my YouTube channel. Breaking the skill down, the windmill can be thought of as a combination of four postures. The stab freeze or elbow lever, the shoulder freeze, the backspin position, and the shoulder freeze on the other side. Before learning the windmill, it's important you are comfortable with these positions. You can learn the elbow lever and backspin positions from my corresponding tutorials. To do the shoulder freeze, lay on your side with the back of the corresponding hand near your face. Place the palm of the other hand next to it, then kick up onto your shoulder with your legs straddled. Ensure you practice this on both sides. When learning the windmill, make sure you do the move in the same direction as other power moves to be able to combo. If you start the skill with a stab freeze or elbow lever on the right hand, you will spin in a clockwise direction. Today, I'll be teaching the skill starting on my left hand, corresponding with a counterclockwise direction. When you are comfortable with the four previous postures, practice linking them together, not worrying about the second axis of rotation at this stage. Start in a stab freeze, transition to the corresponding shoulder, Roll onto your back, onto the other shoulder, and finally back to a stab freeze. Your feet may touch the ground between reps initially, but aim to keep them in the air as you return to the stab freeze. These transitions will likely be clunky and disjointed when you start practicing, but will become more fluid over time. Practice until you can do these transfers in a smooth motion repeatedly. A common mistake involves rolling over the hips and lower back rather than the shoulders and upper back. When you're able to transition between windmill positions smoothly, add the second axis of rotation. This is done through winding up by stepping the legs in the opposite direction that you will be spinning, and unwinding by pulling with the non-supporting hand. With time and practice, you will naturally learn to swing the legs in circular motions during the transitions, which will also help rotation. Train the transitions with the added axis of rotation until the movement is smooth and stays roughly on the spot. Personally, I spin approximately half a rotation with each repetition, which is the same as the air flare. When you can do this, you've got the windmill, but there's a difference between being able to do a move and mastering it. The following drill can help improve the quality of your windmills. Practicing the backspin from a stab freeze can help improve the power of the rotational component of your windmill. This will also improve your entry and help you better learn to swing the legs. Wind up from the stab freeze and unwind into the backspin. By kicking the same leg as the supporting hand behind you initially, you will increase the potential for this leg to swing and generate power. This will also help you get onto your upper back more easily rather than rolling over your hip or onto your lower back. I like to incorporate this into each windmill entry to keep me high on the shoulders and back. Some people choose to keep their head on the ground throughout some or all of their windmill. Personally, I find it more comfortable without any ground contact from the head. Initially, your head will touch the ground during the shoulder freezes. However, when the transitions are smooth and with momentum, you can learn to roll over the shoulders without your head touching the ground. When you have the basic windmill, you can practice comboing it to other moves and progressing to windmill variations. Start practicing variations by rolling over the hands with them together rather than resetting each rep with a stab freeze. When this is easy, you can practice the windmill without hands and move on to different hand positions, for example, nutcrackers. Thanks for watching.